ancient earth. A long time ago. 20, <laughs> the 29th of May, 1920. General, General Evering. Well, I'm farming as well. In the, De the Devonshire Regiment. He was in, he was in Passchendaele. I think he was in part of Mons as well. I could some of it, but, but not a lot really. No. Okay. He, he been through that. He had <coughs> to do with the horses. He was in the trenches. He had frostbite, and uh, out of the the whole uh, the whole First World War, he was two years exactly, and he spent seven months in a hospital out in Arras. He fought in Arras, and he had um, he told me one story where he had three of them together. There's two of his friends, and the German shot, and he, he threw down his watch, this German, and said, mercy, and he said, I couldn't shoot him. <coughs> I, whether he did, we don't know, but he shot Crooked, a red, a red master. He was about sixpence on the wicket. And if you bowl him out, what are sixpence? I had a few. <laughs> <laughs> you were a demon bowler, were you? Well, chiefly a bowler, yeah. Yeah? I was a uh, keen, keen rugby supporter. Who did you follow? Uh, with P P Jansen Newland. But now they're the Cornish Pirates. I was... Well, I was in a nursery work in greenhouses. I was called up then, and in September 1940. Then uh, I done my uh, boys' barracks in Overshot, six weeks training, and my first post in was to 25th General Hospital, in Northern Ireland. Quite good, really. Not the, the trouble they had there. When actually, we used to get the air raid warning when they played in Liverpool. So this particular night we was there. I was in. I was. We was in Bangor, and uh, all of a sudden it wasn't Liverpool. It was we? <laughs> yeah. Bel Belfast out of there, you know. In private buildings in the, in the town itself. Of course, when when that air raid was on, we just rushed up the hospital for fire watching and whatever. It was just one house, and we was about a dozen of us in that house. It got on very well, yeah. Quite strange, really, but there we are. Let's call up and do the do the best we can. On on that particular Sunday morning, well, yeah, well, what? Well, well, it's a sad job, really. But there, what can we do? I had a feeling it would come to that. Yes. That bit of paper at Chamberlain waved, just what he throwed it away, isn't it? What? <laughs> <laughs> Peace in our time, but what? <laughs> it's, it's time, probably. <laughs> well, we never had a lot in Cornwall, not really. No. But, uh, when I was called up in Northern Ireland you now, and then uh, you want to post it back to this country and with 35 field dressing station. Our unit was formed in, in, in um, 
Gainsborough. Of course, then we we done most of our training in Scotland, and eventually came down to southern England. And on the third of June, nineteen forty-four, we boarded the London craft at Southampton. We thought it was something big on um, because we never seen anything like it before. Well, halfway across. <laughs> A bit late. <laughs> Rumors come around, and that was it. We was Six. on this landing craft, and sexy dog. <laughs> on this a Saturday afternoon, on the third of June, we went on the landing craft. We sailed out Southampton Water, stopped there, and we was there until Monday midday. Over from shore was sail at noon, irrespective of weather. It was cancelled for 24 hours. We didn't know that, but it, it was. <laughs> mm. Well, not bad, really. Not bad, really. Well, I don't know. We <laughs> just mucking around and seasick. You were seasick? And, yeah, no. Although I wasn't. I was. The biggest seasick I ever had was going from Liverpool to Belfast. Oh. <laughs> it's hot, <isn't> it? <laughs> well, it was quite choppy, and uh, we got across there. Now, now we was going straight for the beach. That was for the shiver in the land of crowd said. I'll give you a dry landing if it's possible. So away we went, and then it was one holy bang, struck a mine. And what? L luckily, he buckled the plate, that's all. But it was enough to stop us. So then what happened? Well, after so long there, the, the ramp went down, and it was a Big scandal lorry with a trailer. He went down over this ramp and stopped. And uh, they ran from the shore all RAMC personnel off. So we had a big rucksack, climbed out off in this lorry you now, on the side of the lorry, and jumped in the water. I was up to about a year. <laughs> uh, but we waited, we made the way to the shore, fair enough, that was all. And it wasn't long before we were treating casualties. Well, the first landing, I actually, I think, was about half past seven. And we, we went about nine o'clock. It was amazing, amazing civilians around. Yeah. <laughs> wine, tell me, wine, tell me. <laughs> and then we set up in a school there. And D-Day evening, 7 o'clock, we couldn't hold any more. So we started evacuating back on the beach again. On the, on the dock. You know, the amphibious craft. No. You were, you no. were okay. It was quite, quite quiet then. But the, the shouting before wasn't very quiet. <laughs> well, I could see our Navy boats firing. Oh yeah, the war spike. We, we passed the war spike, and she was. 
As much as possible, and that was it. I mean, we were all in the thick of it and do the best we could. Not particularly, no. With all hands on deck the next day, the grand uh, prison casualties and everything of the camp. We were taking them back to a big American transport ship about a mile offshore. Well, we crossed our mind that we'd be treated with casualties. And that was it. <laughs> oh, well, I do the best we could, and that was it. I think so. We we was we was told if uh, we lose half of our, our if we lose half of our men, it will be successful. Only only one, and he went to. Uh, I'm talking about Arnhem now. We was in Nijmegen. He went to a church in Nijmegen, and Jerry came over and bombed the church. His, his uh, grave is in Junkers Bosch in Holland. Well, he came into we and he. Uh, he wanted to, uh, to give him blood transfusion, he said, wouldn't have English blood. So we pulled the knees out three times and that was it. But on the line, the uh, There was going to evacuate casualties, and it was in the area, it was suspected mine. So one of our officers took a jeep, loaded up with sandbags, and went across, crisscross everywhere, never found anything. So we started evacuating and moving across the Rhine. It was a ca Captain Esman. He was uh, awarded the MC for that. He was a mad Irishman. And he took a life in his own hands right when he was... <laughs> Funnily enough, when we was in Normandy, I had in our local paper, my mum used to send them, and it was in there that uh, Captain Esmond was in the Penzance to welcome home the first repatriated prisoners of war. So I tapped him up, and he said, that was me. Quite good. Quite good. I yes, yes. We, we was a, we was a very happy unit. We all got on very well together. The Legion of Honor. I don't know. I don't for it really. <laughs> oh, I do. No, he comes. Just... He come out of the blue. We we was in Normandy. We went in this museum, and the gentleman there said, "Do you know you?" Veterans were given the Legion of Honor. I said, nope, no idea. Well, he said, you are. He said, I'll get the papers. That was it. It took two years of mine to, to get it, but sadly, some have not passed on. You know. Well, we, we went up and uh, it was invited up there to the RMC headquarters. In Aldershot. Yeah.
Or back to Aldershot. Yeah. We, yeah. Went, we took him up. Uh, we stayed at a big hotel in Reading and went there. He's and a real gentleman. The first time we went there, we were, we were the first time we went there, we would used to go in and oh, yeah. have a look around their museum. You see, we were we was ignored, and we were totally ignored. We weren't even no. allowed through the gate. Yeah. And this is after we had a written invitation. So we got back here. <laughs> My wife was livid after all that journey. Anyway, she wrote to the, to the organisation, and it got through to the to the boss. And he sacked people. Anyway, we came, we, by this time, of course, we were back in Cornwall. So we get an invitation to go up there and meet them. Any time we're near, please do come in and see me. So it, after he had been presented with his con, we, we asked if he would be prepared to do it again for, for our cameras. So we took Grandad back to his regimental headquarters. We were shown into their front parlour, for want of a better expression. A lovely room, wasn't it? And uh, the old gentleman, who is also the Queen's surgeon, so Dad went in there as a private and met the existing CO and uh, shook hands. Great buddies, are they were. They were like a couple of old soldiers standing in the corner, chowering away. It was lovely. It was a really good day out. <coughs> we was in Eindhoven in Holland. And there's only one road going up. Where we, we knew we Someone was coming off in Arnhem. They, someone was coming off there. So when they started landing, the air, air, airborne, we made one mad, mad dash up. They called it Hell's Highway. Mm. Of course, we got just in the outskirts of Nijmegen, and of course, everything went wrong. Well, it was probably absolute chaos. Well, tanks and everything all over, all over the place, and an absolute chaos. Just waiting there. I didn't know what to do. I don't. We heard we heard the planes going over. We never actually seen them going to land. Cold. Jerry broke through, and we were rushed back to the hard ends. Oh, it was cold. It was absolutely bitter. Yeah. So then. That was all over. Hope we go again, cross the Rhine, and into Germany. About four to three weeks. Yeah. Yes, yeah, but it was still going. It was bitter. It was actually bitter cold. Oh. Well, in, in our ends, then more. There's a thing we was there. Yeah. Well, I went under a canvas sometime there, and then That's in the building sometime. We met some Americans, not, not a lot, really. Yeah, oh, we were that, yeah. Not really. You know, I had full, full of confidence we was going to do it. That was it. Nazi mother. All right, really? Nazi. Nazi All right. Yeah, I pronounced that, John.
we, we, we had a job to do and we had to, just to do it the best we could. Well, we hoping to, <laughs> we, was hoping, we was hoping that everything was going to be all right. We were six years all together, weren't we? We were six years in the war all together. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah, we found him on the, on the road, in the, in the ditch. Yeah. Well, we treated him and I don't know what happened afterwards. He, yeah, we we had a a French girl that shrapnel wounds, and we treated her. I was I was on on the guard duty, and this lady had a note to a pregnant, and. Uh, why well, didn't he hear command officer? He said, what the hell do you think we are, a maternity unit? <laughs> <laughs> so we, we took her to civilian hospital. <laughs> oh, dear. We were at a museum just inside the, the front line. That first museum? Yeah. And uh, we were doing and going around the place and looking at uniforms and like that. And there was one sort of setup. Uh, we showed the sea, the, the stream running up yes. and the battlefield and etc. And, the case, you know. and Dad's looking at it and he said, that's where we came ashore. He said, we went ashore there, moved up there, and that house on the end, that house on the end we made into a Red Cross station. And the, man and the manager who had been showing us around said, you did. He did. He said, that was my <laughs> house. Oh, you think of the odds of that. Yeah, young boy. When he was a boy and this all took place, kicked off, his mother grabbed him and took him to Paris. But that had been his parents' home for donkey's year. And he yeah, should have been there. But him. Dad set up... Uh, a Red Cross station. That's the lady in the first house in Normandy. The French commander was here. He gave me a cap badge. <laughs> We went back here on that trip, and the commando, a bunch of, a, car, a coach load of them, pulled up, all piled out, and went and had a drink with the lady in the restaurant, um, as indeed had Dad. And uh, when they all came out, they suddenly saw Dad sitting at one of the tables, and uh, went over and sort of shook hands with him, being a veteran, and one of them, very kindly, took the badge off his hat, which obviously was part of his uh, regimental yeah. whatever have you, um, and presented it to Dad, put it on his jacket, and he still got it like it. That was uh, our furry going across the Rhine. I knew we crossed the Rhine at a place called Rees. And when we was on one of our journeys there, Went across the line, got off there, and there it was, Reese, on the wall, Reese. Well, one day we had done the woods, and we took them for a drive, and we pulled into a car park. And we were sort of strolling over to the to look at the monument, and a uh, whole school were there, and this was the headmaster. Is that from Somerset or Taunton? I don't know where. Right. And he asked Dad to go over and just say a few words to a classroom of kids. Oh, Dad's in his in his element, Mick. He's there telling them about what what he's seen and done, 
and uh, when he had finished, the headmaster presented his school jumper to that. That's his class with Dad holding forth. That little girl is 24 now. And that's her with that's her granddad, granddad on Gold Beach. Yeah, that's two, that's sort of three generations there. Walking on Gold Beach. <laughs>